we, we, last week we talked a little bit about our I Connect, and you can always connect to the church through the ministries, and we are developing and growing those, so get in on this foundational level, go to the I Connect desk at the, at the uh, you know, in the lobby there, if you want to be a member, uh, you know, didn't get a chance to do that today, go there and sign, tell them you want to be, tell them get my name on for the next one, if you want to, you know, uh, connect in a ministry, that's where you find out about them. And I said something about the media ministry. We, we need more camera people. If you're technically inclined at all, would like to be trained in that way, we need camera people. The more people we have like that, the better it would be. Run sound, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of things that need to be done. You know, we ought to just have 100% participation in this church. Doing something. Uh, I mean, they can use you here on the grounds to, uh, and I, hey, by the way, don't our grounds look fantastic? We have an expert in charge of it, and that's Delena Scarborough. Where is she at? Is she here this morning? Delena Scarborough here. Uh, uh, third. 30 years of experience, and it shows. I'm telling you, the front of this building and, and the grounds are looking just as good as they probably ever have, and, and uh, she's doing an amazing job, and, and uh, she's got these men around here. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it right at that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're doing a wonderful, wonderful. And what the station has done now is uh, this week, I met with them, and they offered to give us more than 10 commercials a week so that not only do we have the program at the discounted price for free, they are going to throw in and just give us more than, they guarantee that our commercials will air more than 10 times a week and probably a lot more. And so we're going to bring them a little collage of commercials, and uh, then they're going to put them in the rotation and at no cost. And I don't know if any businesses here have ever done commercials on television. It's not cheap to do a 15-second or 30-second commercial. And we're going to get 10 or more a week. That's at no cost to us except bringing them a commercial. I just think we ought to do it, but I'll tell you a big part of it is up to you because uh, right at the moment, it's kind of a step of faith and it's, it's up to this congregation. Do you want us to be out there? Do you want to do that? Uh, so, you know, I'm not, I don't want to twist your arm. just want to tell you, I, I, I just believe God wants us out there. And, and, but it's up to you. It's up to our congregation. If you'd like to help us with that and, and uh, let's do it for another 13 weeks and we'll see. And, and and uh, what if we reach another hundred people like Rob? And uh, what if another thousand people like him begin to hear this message and, and, um, and just get blessed and inspired and find a home? What a beautiful, beautiful... This is a family morning. And uh, we have one thing left to do, and that is baptize a precious person here this morning. And... And uh, obeying the command of Scripture to, to baptize in the name of the Lord. And uh, I just want to share for these few moments before we do that, the greatest Scripture in the Bible that I know of to explain baptism is found in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Would you let me read it for you here? And Romans 6 verse 1 through verse 14. Romans 6, verse 1 through verse 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. Woo, glory, hallelujah. I want to say this about this scripture and preach a sermon in about three minutes. This scripture is all about identification. It is identifying, and when a person goes into that water and comes out, it is an identification with Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. It is a point of identification, and it identifies, with, uh, it identifies us with his accomplishing death and his victorious resurrection. It identifies us with his accomplishing death and with his victorious resurrection. In identity, the scriptures say, in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. As we go into the waters of baptism, we are saying we are in Christ Jesus and in his accomplishing death that we identify with, the scriptures say Jesus himself in the gospel of John said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. What he is saying is if I go and die on that cross, I'm taking everybody with me to that cross. If I go on to Calvary and am nailed to that cross and I pay the price for sin, the price for sin and the, and the fallen nature of man is going to be paid for for everybody because I'm taking everybody with me. In theological terms, we call this the vicarious death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our vicar. He is the one who did it on our behalf, did not do it for his own benefit because he was sinless, but took upon himself our sins, carried them to the cross, and there dealt them their final blow and released us from condemnation and guilt and released us from the bondage of sin into the glorious liberty of our God. The proof of it is, is that when he died on that cross, the veil was rent. Man was dealt with in his sin in such a way that the presence of God could come out of the holy of holies and now be in the presence of man and with man once again because the accomplishing death of Jesus dealt with our sin and accomplished a redemption for every person who ever has and ever will walk on the face of the earth. He's in us to make what God came through Jesus to do for us and bring us into that truth. A lot of people are trying to get
into those things through their own works, through their own efforts. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to baptize you with God himself, the Holy Spirit, and he will bring you into the truth. Hallelujah. What if we relied on him? God, today, bring me into the truth of sonship with God. Bring me into the truth of your grace and your healing and your provision and the promises of the word. Holy Spirit, I'm baptized. I'm filled with you. Bring me into the truth. That's what he's there for. That's what he's there for. And the next wording says he's there to take, verse 14. It says he'll glorify me. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now remember, in Acts chapter 1 where I read, and you shall be witnesses to me, Jesus himself said those words. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me. A lot of people read that and they, they say, oh, well, that means we're empowered to witness to people, you know, be a witness that, in that way, and we certainly are. But the wording is this, be a witness to me. A witness to him would be that when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a witness to Jesus that his work was good enough that God could move into man. And all over the world, in Jerusalem, Samaria, Jude, all over the world, and the uttermost parts of the world, people with God in them and on them are a witness to Jesus that his sacrifice, his redemption, his justification through his resurrection was enough to clean us up, to make us vessels fit for the very presence and person of God to inhabit man again. Every time a person is saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus receives a witness that his work was good enough. Hallelujah! Every day that I'm walking in the fullness of His Spirit and I'm, and I'm walking in my redemption, I'm a witness. And my friend, all over the world today, people are a witness to the perfect work of Jesus that was so good that it qualified man to be the host of God Himself. <laughs> Woo, glory, hallelujah. That's us, that's us. Be a witness to us. And then here in the wording that we just read, John 16, 14, he'll glorify me, you see. He'll glory, the Lord gets glorified because he'll take of what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit will take what is Jesus and declare it to you. What does that mean? Is he just telling us about it? No, if you look at this wording, declare it to us, it means take what is Jesus and make it yours. Take what belongs to him. The same standing of sonship Jesus has, the Holy Spirit makes it yours. The same authority that Jesus had with the Father, I always thank you that you always hear me. The same privileges he had with the Father, the Holy Spirit takes it and makes it ours. No wonder we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. No wonder we speak with new tongues. No wonder we do the things that are promised in the Bible because what is Jesus, what belongs to him, the Holy Spirit takes that and declares it to us. If you are to look through God's eyes at what you look like, you would find you look just like Jesus. You have the same rights. You have the same privileges. You have the same standing. You have the same authority. You have the same ability. Hallelujah. So you really can say, what would Jesus do? Because what he would do 
is what the Holy Spirit is in our life to declare to us. Oh, Pentecost was an amazing, amazing thing because it was the promise of the Father. Then you find scripture like Luke 4.18 and Acts 10.38 and, and different places like this where it talks about uh, and Jesus himself read from the scripture in, in uh, 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 yeah, Luke 4 verse 18 how God anointed him. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do this, you know. And then Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus. And the anointing or being anointed is just the ability of the spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit's not with us just to hitch a ride. He doesn't need a taxi cab. Uh, you know, I need a ride somewhere. He, he's not with us for his benefit. He indwells us and, has, and we are immersed in him for our benefit. He's not here just to hitch a ride with us and make life more difficult for us. He's here to anoint us. And I have to make this distinction uh, for people. Um, some people, you know, think that, that the anointing, you know, you've heard the term the anointing, which really all that means is the power or ability of the Holy Spirit. And so some people are looking for an anointing I say, hey, receive the Holy Spirit and put faith in him and the anointing is just his ability that comes with him. You don't have to look for the anointing. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have the anointing. Are, are you understand what I'm saying? We're not looking for a wind. We're not looking for a power alone. We're looking for the person of the Holy Spirit. We have not just received God's ability. We have received God himself. And so he didn't, just, he didn't just blow a breath on us, a wind. We believe in the third person of the Trinity. We have literally been immersed in God himself. And, and having been such, we have his ability in our life. That our words, our mouth, our hands, our actions are literally done, as Paul said, whatever you do, do it all in the name of Jesus. If we put faith in that Holy Spirit, God living in us, We would expect, we would expect the anointing or the effect of God in everything we do. In every word we speak, in every touch, in, every, in everything that we attempt or are operating in, we would expect the ability of God. Isn't that what we saw with Jesus? Isn't that what we saw with Jesus? Everything that he came up to, every circumstance he encountered, everything that was brought to him, we look at the testimony and we go, he did it with God backing him up. God was with him. Well, it wasn't something elite for him. He came to show us what a man without sin could walk like. And I say that intentionally because you and I, if you're in Christ, you're a man without sin. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. Somebody says, yeah, but we, don't we sin? Well, that, that's why we have a Savior. That's why we have a Savior. Praise God. You need to become more Savior conscious than sin conscious. Become more in him conscious than in yourself conscious and allow yourself to realize that's why Jesus came. And every time a person is, is filled with the Holy Spirit or you could say 
born again, the Spirit comes to live in them, that's, that would be technically how we would describe it as you're born of the spirit spirit comes to live in you baptized of the spirit you're immersed in the spirit as in acts chapter 2 and uh, further in the book of acts and but every time a person becomes a vessel of the holy spirit it's a witness to jesus that my death my work of redemption so clean them up. And I, I mean, I don't know whether you all, you all think like this when you read scripture and go and look at these truths, but, but that's why I'm here to teach it, right? To help us all see it. <laughs> but you, you know, God can't be in the presence of sin. I mean, I, I, he can be in the presence of sin. He's everywhere, but he does not fellowship with sin. Might be a better way to say it. Uh, different different ways. I, I, the reason I say that is because the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. Well, whatever happened in that death, and we know, you know, from Scripture, there was obviously a separation of God and man. Death set in. And Jesus came to remedy that situation. Well, he didn't come to do a half a halfway job. He didn't come to clean us up almost because there were no little bit of sin and lots of sin. The moment sin entered, death came. Are you with me? See, you got you to gotta work with this stuff a little bit and as the truth, it's like, wow, it really is that good. I mean, it wasn't like, well, if you just tell a little white lie, you know, it'll, I'll, I'll keep you in. But, it, but once you do the big one, then you're out. Sin is sin. Sin is a violation of the eternal perfection of God. That's what sin is. Sin is not your little deeds. You know, it is deeds that we do, but, but sin is in our heart, in our attitude, and results in, in deeds. But it's a violation of all the perfection of an eternally perfect and holy God. Now let that sink in for just a moment. So in order for God to be compatible with these vessels called his children, called people, those people have to be made to match his perfection. Glory, hallelujah. So if you stumble over when I say that Jesus came to, to reveal what a man without sin could walk like, and, we, and you think, well, that could never be us, you just don't know how powerful redemption is yet. Redemption and what Jesus did is so powerful and so right that the same, the same position with God that Jesus had is now offered to us. And it has to be a, a position of perfection in God's eyes or he could not move in. You don't have to go very far in the Old Testament types and shadows in the tabernacle and the shedding of the blood and the, the holy place and the most holy place and the presence of God and how people couldn't approach the presence of God and how God would be, you know, had to be behind the curtain and, and, and how sacrifice for sin had to be made just for, I mean, you don't have to go very far in the types and shadows to realize that unless this thing was really, really, really right I mean you just start thinking about that and studying it a little bit it means it has to be perfect so you literally can if you are in Christ now that's the key thing in Christ remember Paul in, in, in uh, Philippians chapter 3 said I count everything I've done all my education all my smarts everything I've done I count it as nothing I count it as garbage that I may be found. Uh, how, I mean, how good is that righteousness? It's good enough that God wants to move in. 
which then means apparently there's no little bit there. There's not a little bit left. You don't have a little bit of sinner left in you. You still have some flesh to deal with you, but that doesn't mean there's a sinner in there. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. Praise God. What time is it? We better get out of here before I get all fired up. <laughs> That's how compatible we are with God. Glory be to God. People just don't a lot of times stop and really think through these things and therefore they stay under a, a cloud of condemnation and not sure, you know. But we can really say Jesus came to show us what a man without sin could be like because he was going to make us a man without sin so that we could have the same dwelling place he has and the works he did we can do also and greater works because he's going to go to the Father and make sure that that position is always kept through his own intercession between us and him. <laughs> I got to stop or I'll go for three hours on this stuff. This, stu this stuff just gets me, gets me messed up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We give you praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. Thank you that you are with us every moment of every day to take what is his and declare it to us, to make real in us the truth that Jesus came to bring us. Hallelujah. Thank you that we don't have to do this on our own, but that it is through faith in Jesus Christ that we would be found in him, found in him, Glory be to God that you have done such a work in us, for us, that we can have God, that you, Holy Spirit, have moved into my house.